So, welcome back for the third lecture of this week. So, in this week we are doing some advanced topics on text mining and so today we will, so this lecture we will start with information extraction. So, we will see what are the basic, uh, some of the basic applications where information extraction will be used, what kind of techniques you can use and we will focus our attention to a specific task that is relation extraction. How do I find out relations between any two entities by using the text corpus on the web. So, what do I mean by uh, information extraction? So, so we can say that the goal of information extraction is like machine reading. So, you have a lot of text available on the web, it is all on the un unstructured form, there is no particular structure to that. Now, from that text can I obtain some structured knowledge that can be used for various different applications and tasks. Okay. So, this is like a uh, some sort of caricature to, to denote that that yes, you have a lot of knowledge available on the web and machine is trying to go through the knowledge and get some structured content that can be useful. So, so what the information extraction systems do? They try to find and understand various different relevant parts of the text data. So, so what you will have? You will have a lot of text and you are trying to gather certain important information from there. And so, we will see what are the various ways in which you can gather this information. So, now from this all this data that is available, what you want? You want to get a structured representation of some sort of relevant information. And it can be like various relations in the sense of database. So, you can find out what are the various entities involved in this text and what are the relations between those entities and can also be some sort of knowledge base that you are constructing from the data. So, uh, so the goal of information extraction is that we organize information, so that it can be useful for two people for, uh, for doing some of their tasks and we want to put information in a very precise form that will allow me to make further inferences. Okay. So, remember this was one of the things that we were talking about in the introduction also that the natural language text is not very precise. So, how do you make, how do you convert the information to something precise that can be used for doing various tasks and various inferences and that is what we be doing in the, in the case of information extraction. So, this is a simple definition that you can, that this is a sort of work in de definition we will say. So, so, what is information extraction? So, that is task of finding structured information from unstructured or semi structured text. So, your the corpus or data that you have is either completely unstructured, okay. so you can think of various tweets, various Quora questions, answers and lot of web pages sort of unstructured or it can be somewhat semi structured where you have some more information like section information. Uh, headlines, etcetera. But this is not completely structured. So, from this unstructured or semi structured data, I want to find out structured information, and that is what is the definition of my information extraction. So, so now question comes in that what sort of information do you want to extract from here? So, information can be something very, very uh, clear and factual, like for example, this is this is uh, this is something that that is normally done. So, question like who did what to whom, when, and who is in what relation to some other entity, and and so on. So, for example, suppose you have some newspaper text, and they talk about various uh, earnings, profit, headquarters, etc. And this is one one of the company report. The headquarters of BHP Built and Limited and the global headquarters of the combined BHP built in group are located in Melbourne, Australia. Okay. This is some sort of uh, unstructured data that you can say in, in the form of a sentence. Now, from this data, you want to gather some structured information. So, what kind of structured information do you get from this text? So, you will see that. So, what are the headquarters of BHP built in limited? So, and you know the location here, Melbourne, Australia. And this can be some sort of structured information that you are trying to gather from this simple sentence and that is what your information extraction system can do. So, from here suppose I get this information 
headquarters of BHP Built and Limited are in Melbourne, Australia. So, in sort of relation form, there are two entities and there is a relation between them and this you are extracting by using information extraction. Now, what is the, so what is the use of doing this extraction? So, once you do this extraction, you will have all these tuples. So, you will know these two entities are related, are related by this relation and so on and over there you can do lot of queries, you can do lot of inferences and so on. And this can be very helpful for many question answering tasks also. Another example, let us say we have the sentence, in 1998 Larry Page and Sajib Bin founded Google. Okay. Now, from the sentence, what kind of information you can get? So, who are the founders of Google and when did they find, when did they found Google? So, all this information can be extracted from here and put in a very structured form. So, like I can have information like founder of Larry Page Google, founder of Sergey Brin Google and founded in Google in 1998. So, all this information is there in this text and this can be extracted by using information extraction systems. So, now once you have this information, it can be used by various search engines and database management systems to provide better services to the end users. It is not very trivial to do it directly by using the text data, but once you have this in a database form, you can you can do a lot of different tasks and look you can use a lot of different tools to, to make use of this information. So, now what are the various applications of information extraction? For example, in biomedical domain. So, in biomedical domain you have a lot of uh, research papers that are published that give details about what were the various experiments that were done using and using various uh, patients and what were the findings of those experiments and what kind of drugs worked, what kind of drugs did not work. There can be many clinical, clinical trials, there can be various patents and all that. Lot of information is there, but this is all in a very unstructured form. So, so suppose I need to look for discoveries that are related to various genes proteins or other biomedical entities. So, and, and then the problem here could can be that these entities can have various synonyms and there are a lot of ambiguities involved. So, what is the task? I need to automatically identify what are the mentions of biomedical entities in the text. I find out okay, these are all the entities that are mentioned in the text and then I want to link them to their corresponding entries in their lexical database. Suppose, I have a database that says okay, these are all the all the different biomedical entities. Now, in a research paper, I, I need to find out okay, this entity talks about this is corresponding to the per particular entity in the database. This is very similar to the entity linking problem that we discussed in this week itself. Now, once we find out various entities in, in the document, other task here could be that I want to find out how they are related to each other. So, this is called relation extraction. That is one of the focus of uh, the next three lectures. So, so this is an example. So, you have this uh, research paper in biomedical dom domain and this is research paper you also get some abstract. Now, from this abstract can you extract information in a structured format like P53 is a protein, BAX is a protein, P53 has function of apoptosis and so on. Now, all this information is available in the text data, but not in this very nice structured format. So, from, from there can you extract these are the entities and this is the relation between them. So, here, so you find what are the entities and with different, between various pairs of entities, what is the relation and this is called the structured knowledge extraction and this the analogy is shown here. So, the research paper abstract can be thought of as a as a summary for humans and this structured knowledge base can be thought of as summary for machines. So, machines can make use of this information for various tasks now. Another example, so this is like a report that, that you find on the web and from this report can you extract various relations. So, here you have the sentence American Airlines a unit of AMR immediately match the move a spokesman Tim Wagner said. So, from here you can find out that Tim Wagner region is a spokesman for American Airlines and suppose your relation is employee. So, you can say Tim Wagner is an employee of American Airlines. Also, 
American Airlines is a unit of AMR. So, you can have this relation American Airlines is a subsidiary of AMR. Okay. And similarly, here United a unit of UAL, you can find out this relation again. So, from this huge amount of tax data, can you find out this structured information? So, that is the task of information extraction. Find out the entities and what are the relations between them. Another example, so and so the relation can be also very, very generic. So, like it can be personal relations like married to mother of organization relations like a spokesman for president of artifactual owns something, invented something, produces something. There can be geospatial relations that this city is near to this city, this city is in the on the outskirts of the city and these kind of relations might be very, very helpful in uh, replying to various queries that talk about that need geography information. So, you know what cities are nearby other cities. So, you can try to answer these kind of questions and directional relation this is southeast of and so on and they can be part of relation. So, unit of something parent of annexed acquired so for these political relations. So, you can think of lot of lots and lots of different relations that can be established between entities. Now, using these relations you can do lot of different uh, uh, some sort of knowledge engineering you can do lot of inferencing you can try to answer questions and 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 try to predict certain relations between entities. So, lot of different tasks that you can use once do you can do once you have this structure information. So, now, so the topic here is how do we gather this structure information. Okay. So, there are like uh, I would say in like in many different NLP applications. So, here also there are five different methods for doing this task. So, one simple method is use your hand build patterns. Then you can use bootstrapping methods, you can use supervised methods, distance supervision is a very, very nice idea that you will see for this particular task and then you can also use some unsupervised methods. So, we will focus on the first four methods and we will see uh, clearly how you can use one of these methods for the task of information extraction. So, let us see what we do in the hand build patterns. So, idea is you can use various regular expressions for finding entities and the relations between them. So, suppose you want to find the entities. So, here, so this is uh, for noun groups, a simple regular expression. So, a regular expression you can also uh, denote by using a finite automaton. So, here you are seeing a finite automaton that is denoting a regular expression. And this, so what is it denoting? Any noun group. So, let us try to follow this. So, you have this uh, phrase John's interest, interesting book with a nice cover. This is a noun group. So, how does this automata captures this? So, you say a personal noun John, John's okay. interesting becomes an adjective, book is a noun with say preposition a article nice adjective cover noun and it is, it is a final state. So, this becomes a noun group. So, you will see even John is a noun group and John's interest interesting book is also a uh, noun group. So, it is trying to capture nouns group noun group in various sort of granularities. You can even have single word you can have multiple words. So, it, it is telling you what is a noun group. Now, you can further extend it to find out okay I know what are the noun groups. Now, what is the relation between So, suppose I want to find out which person holds what position in what organization. So, what kind of patterns I can think of a person x holding position y in organization z. So, suppose I have to use some hand build patterns how will I go about it. So, I will first think about what are the various kind of sentences where uh, all these three entities can, can occur together. So, there will be a person who is working in an organization. So, and then once I have found some sentences, I will try to, to abstract what is the normal pattern that I am seeing here. So, for example, one pattern can be person comma position of organization, because you find sentences like Vuk Draskovic is a person comma position leader 
of the Serbian renewal movement. Okay. So, now what you are upsetting here, there is a person, position and organization. And now, you can think of many, many, many such uh, sentences, where all the, these three entities will be there in this relation. So, once you have identified this pattern, you will give this pattern to the machine and from the corpus, it can extract all these entities for you and you will know immediately that these entities are connected by a part correlation. What can be other uh, patterns? So, like organization, named, appointed etcetera, person, preposition, office. Okay. Again, there are all these entities. So, NATO appointed Vassilage Clark as commander in chief. So, you are finding again all the three uh, entities in a particular relation. So, similarly, suppose your task is to find out where is an organization located. So, we will think about what are the patterns. So, something like x located in y and or y is x is headquarters. So, we will think of these patterns and using these patterns, you will try to extract these pairs of x y. Like organization location, NATO headquarters in Brussels. So, we will extract NATO headquarters and Brussels as the two entities organization location and you can say division branch headquarters like K4 Kosovo headquarters. So, you know this is the organization and it is the location. So, like that you can think of various patterns and extract these relations. And this is one of the very early examples on how these kind of patterns were used for extracting hyponym relation. So, hyponym is a, you remember is a relation between sub concept and a super concept. So, and these were uh, first given by Hurst. So, what is the basic intuition? Suppose you are seeing this sentence, agar is a substance prepared from a mixture of red algae such as gallidium for laboratory or industrial use, this is the sentence. Now, suppose I ask what is gallidium and you can say okay, uh, gallidium is some sort of algae or red algae from this sentence. Yes. Now, how do you know that gallidium is a red algae? So, you, you are seeing some sort of pattern here, red algae such as gallidium. Okay. So, this pattern is telling you that gallidium is a kind of red algae. Now, you can try to abstract this pattern and you say that whenever you are finding such patterns x such as y, there is a hyponym hyponym relation between x and y. And this is the idea, find out many such patterns and from these patterns you try to extract these entities. So, what Hirsch did? He found out various such patterns, where you can have two entities connected by hyponym relation. So, uh, y such as x is for hyponyms. So, what are the other kind of patterns you can use? Such y as x, okay, like such vehicle as car, such vehicle as bicycle, okay, x or other y, yes car or other vehicle, car and other vehicle, vehicles including car and, and so on, okay. vehicle especially car. So, this I am giving an example with car and vehicle, but you can think of it as with any hyponym hyponym pair. So, he found out various such patterns and from these patterns he tried to extract the hyponym hyponym relation from the text data. So, here are some examples for these hash patterns and the what kind of example occurrences you can see in the data. So, the pattern x and other y you can see temples, treasuries and other important civic buildings. So, from this sentence you can immediately see that temples and treasuries are sub concepts of civic buildings. So, you can have this pair of hyponym hyponym, civic buildings are the hyponym and temples is the hyponym. Similarly, treasuries is the hyponym x or other y. So, bruises, wounds, broken bones or other injuries. So, you can have all these as the hyponyms of injuries. Y such as x, so the bolute such as the bambaran dung. So, here you can see that uh, bolute is the super concept, this is the sub concept. Such y as x, such authors as Harry Goldsmith and Shakespeare. So, immediately you will see there is a relation here and so on, y including x, y especially x. So, so Hurst manually found out all these patterns and from these patterns he was trying to extract the hyponym hyponym pair from the data. 
Similarly, Ber Berland and Chaniak, they found out some patterns for Maronim relation that is part of relation, basement is a part of building. So, they were trying to find out uh, patterns for, for Maronims. So, again you can think of what are the patterns that come to your mind. So, so like buildings basement. So, you will think of some example and see what kind of sentences they occur in buildings basement, basement of the building and so on and you will try to make patterns out of these. So, so let us take these two simple examples. So, like I am seeing that I have an example basement and building okay. and this is my suppose my x and this is my y and I want to find out many such x y pairs that have the same maronym relation. So, how will I start? I say okay, in the sentence age, how will basement and building occur together? So, something like basement's building, sorry, building's basement. So, it will be y is x, building's basement, okay, or basement of the building, x of the y, and so on, okay. And these are now my patterns. Okay, and then you will try to see in my corpus, where do all these patterns occur. So, example is cars wheel, wheel of the car. So, you will see okay, these x y are related by this Maronin relation and that is how you will try to. So, using these patterns you will try to get the many such x, x prime y prime pairs. Okay. So, what Berland and Chaniak did? They selected some initial patterns by finding all sentences in a corpus that contain basement and building. Okay. That is a no normal, uh, is a nice method of finding these patterns. So, then they found like buildings basement, basement of a building, basement in a building, basements of buildings, basements in buildings and so on. Now, here they were writing down the patterns. So, here something like and then, so they were writing in terms of what is the part of speech that is coming and, and so on. So, of preposition so, parts the plural noun of preposition holes and then this is a plural noun. So, this is part and whole relation, okay. part coming as an in, in between there is the word in as a preposition, the or a as a determiner and some modifiers. So, they are now here abstracting. So, what they are saying okay, uh, basement in a building, but it might be basement in a huge building. right? So, how do I abstract my pattern? I say okay, they optionally they can be an adjective here. So, that is why they are saying JJ or NN star basement in a civic building and so on. All these can be captured by slightly uh, generalizing these, con these patterns. So, that is what you are seeing here JJ or NN. So, you can have a civic building, huge building and all these will be captured here. So, like that you try to find out these patterns and using these patterns. So, once you have these patterns, you try to extract some other entity pairs that are uh, involved in this relation. So, now, so this is a nice method if you want to sit down and, and look at each and every relation and, and think about the patterns and that is the, that is also the problem with this approach that some, some persons who are uh, good with the data, the, who are also language, they know how, how the systems work, they can, they can, they can try to f get you some handwell patterns. So, now question the problem is that they are hard to write and hard to maintain and there are like you can think of zillions of patterns. So, you can think of so many different ways in which people can talk about hyponym hyponym pair in the in the data. So, how do I capture all of these patterns manually and yeah they might be domain dependent. So, every domain you might have different ways of writing things and yes you, you can do that for some relations, but suppose there are thousands of relations. How do you do for all these? thousand relations and yeah. So, e and these patterns that Hurst found or Berlin and Chaniak found, they were giving ok kind of results, but they were not like giving very, very accurate results. So, for example, Hurst patterns gave roughly 66 percent accuracy on hyponym detection and Berlin and Chaniak gave 55 percent accuracy on maronyms. So, you would like probably prefer to have better accuracy than these numbers. So, so so, that is using handwell patterns, you can only go little, so only small distance and th there also lot of manual effort is required. So, how can we avoid this manual effort 
and that is what we will see in the other approaches that will be discussed. Starting from how do we do simple bootstrapping here, okay? And that is what we will be discussing in the next lecture. Thank you.